one of the problems we've got with the migration issue is we're mixing up the problem with the solution. And people who don't accept the solution which is on offer are being told they don't recognize the problem. This is absurd. And the problem is presented in such a way that the only solution available is Suella Bravman's Rwanda solution, which is certainly not the only solution available, the only solution on offer. And the problem that she advances is not necessarily, or in fact indeed, the real problem. So we've got a lot of shorthand involved. So if we were, for example, to listen to what Margaret Thatcher had to say when she was Prime Minister, she was talking about illegal immigrants or illegal, um, well, today we would say illegal migrants. She said illegal immigrants. And an illegal immigrant was defined as somebody who had either overstayed their visa or who had been defined as ineligible for asylum and therefore was expected to return to their home country. And if they didn't, they became, they became automatically an illegal immigrant. That is an illegal immigrant. That terminology has already, has always existed. And Thatcher invokes that. Let's have a look at what Thatcher is actually saying here. Those who are genuine refugees, and that is determined again by the United Nations, will not be returned. Those who are illegal immigrants, those who are illegal immigrants will be returned. And it is customary international law for countries to receive their own immigrants back into their country. And if he is right, honourable gentleman, is suggesting that we ever get to a position when you cannot return illegal immigrants to their country of origin, then he, is, then he is proposing international no, you, chaos. And you compare with, with what um, you compare that to what Suella Braverman says, it sounds the same. But Braverman is applying the term illegal migrant uh, to a, an entirely different group of people, to people who have simply come here by a means which is not... Uh, legally recognized, i.e. across the channel or through a port or, 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 or now there are routes from Santander, which we're going to hear about in a few minutes from Mr. Farage. Um, but that is not the illegal immigrant that Thatcher was referring to. So this new brand of illegal migrant is only recognized in the UK. The UK uh, nationality and Borders law, which became law in November last year, defies the international understanding of what an illegal migrant is. It's redefining the terminology. And that, I think, is very dangerous because it still hasn't been challenged and still hasn't been tested in the courts. It will need to be tested. And it will need to be tested not only in the national courts, our national courts, but also in international courts. And I think Suella Brabham is going to end up in a really difficult position. I think we're going to be paying for this for the rest of our life. Now, what Nigel Farage says is that we should do exactly what Australia did. Australia was in a different position and Australia simply took people that it didn't want back to Indonesia in a boat and the UN and the EU were apoplectic with fury and uh, wished Australia many, many harms, but in the end accepted the situation because it was far enough away and because actually it stopped the drownings, it stopped the small boats. The same route, I think, is not viable for the UK. First of all, we are um, a part of Europe, uh, a clod away from Europe, but nevertheless a part of Europe, as John Donne might have said. We are a part of the whole. And we are simply divided from Europe by a very small channel. And to drag uh, the boats back to France and deliver them to France, this is not going to work. France has already said it's not going to fall for that one, and I'm sure it would challenge us in the international courts. Let's listen to this what Mr. Farage has to say to uh, Dan Wooten on his programme. In the boots of cars, 
This stuff is all still going on, not to the same degree that it was. The security has improved on people coming in transport vehicles. But, you know, the truth is, even if it costs 14 grand, if you're coming in to join the drugs trade, it ain't going to take you very long to pay that off. And the truth of it is that, and, um, you know, this is not just me saying this, the TikTok adverts show people with big bundles of cash, come and join criminal activity in the UK and make your money. Now, the remarkable thing is this. Of the Albanians that came last year across the channel, 50% were granted refugee status. 50% coming from a country that is an EU applicant member, that is a holiday destination, that has maybe not the most perfect government, but certainly a stable government. In Germany, Albanian asylum claims were 0%. Every single one got rejected. And even if you do get deported back to Albania, what's to stop you coming back again? So we really have, you know, more holes in our borders than a Swiss cheese. None of this is working. No, indeed. And lots of ideas, Nigel, lots of new ideas. Uh, Roger Howard, writing in The Spectator, suggests that maybe we should consider sending arrivals back to France's former colonies. <laughs> Could that work? Well, well, you know, I mean, look, it's, it's a fun idea, but the truth of it is, the truth of it is, we have to send people back to France. And if the French won't cooperate, we have to physically do it. And they'll be the biggest hullabaloo you've ever seen. It'll be as big as when Australia towed the boats back in 2012 mm -hmm. to Indonesia. Big. And the UN went mad. And the EU went mad. And the British Foreign Office went mad. And Australia was reduced to pariah state. But do you know what happened? Hmm. The boat stopped coming, the drowning stopped, the death stopped, and Australia solved the problem. But I want to say this, Dan. Hmm. All the while we stay part of the ECHR, and the clue is not just the court in Strasbourg, it's the incorporation of the convention into British law, which British judges use, all the while deportations of almost anybody, anywhere, have become... Have become now, it wouldn't come as any great surprise to anybody that I disagree with uh, Nigel Farage, but he put his case very clearly, and uh, and, and I think wrongly. Uh, I think there are... I, I You know, I, I have no sympathy with the Albanian drugs trade. I certainly know about it. Um, and I've talked to people about it directly. Uh, and I think Farage is wrong. I think uh, people who are caught up in that drugs trade are pawns and certainly don't make their money back quickly. And they are completely trapped. Uh, they are slaves to their um, slave masters. Whoever has arranged that ticket out from North Albania is in control of these young men for a very long time, and they are forced to, um, well, they are they are surrendering their freedom to these awful people who are prob who probably have their own family under threat as well. So it, it's certainly not a straightforward um, transaction for greed. There's a lot of threat involved there, and I think Farage is being extremely simplistic, and he knows he's being simplistic in his analysis here. But, but, and, and the big but is that, um, is that we have to do something about the problem. So as I said at the beginning, uh, there's a difference between recognizing the problem and accepting the solution which is proposed. So Ella Brabman's solution, I think, is the wrong solution, and her definition of the problem is um, ill-defined because she is using language that goes back to an understanding which Mrs. Thatcher is referencing. That is, an illegal migrant is somebody who has overstayed their visa or who has been rejected by the asylum system. And that implies that our home office is actually working. Our home office is not working. And the new definition of an illegal migrant is based on the fact that the Home Office is idle and lazy and hasn't done its job.